what's up tribe how you guys doing we are back for another season of marrying millions this is season two episode one so we have two returning couples i guess the couples that didn't get married in season one you know the whole concept of the show is are you gonna get married or not and then we have a couple of new couples that we're going to be reviewing now remember i told you guys i started doing this show because i a friend of a friend is on the show so he's on season two and on season three that's going to be starting later on this month so we're going to try to get caught up. I know I took a couple of weeks off from marrying millions, but we're going to try to get caught up for season three. So let's get into it. Let's start with Bill and, and Bree. We know them from last season. They didn't get married. They ended the season with this big old promise ring. Now listen, Miss Bree has gotten a little used to the money, honey. I think she might have got herself a little stylist this season or something. Because baby, she showed up on the scene with this beautiful um giving me real um olivia pope trench coat okay it looked really nice and she looked really nice and bill um had her down to his new project it's a virgin hotel that he built i guess down in dallas um really big project and he has one of the master penthouses at the top and he takes her up there and he's like hey baby this is us because this is us you know so get used to it, enjoy it. And so we see them having a conversation and it's her 22nd birthday. Cause remember last season she was 21 and he was like, yeah, you know, um, you're legal. We want to let everybody know. We want to celebrate that you're legal. And I'm like, she been legal. She's 21. But I guess maybe like 21, you're at legal. And then 22 is like, okay, we got past the legal situation, but you're really legal at 18, 21, you can drink. Anyway, it, it's whatever. They're going to, Bill wants to have this big birthday party for her to celebrate her 22nd birthday. And she was like, okay, well, who are we going to invite? And he was like, well, I just think we should invite everybody. And she was like, who is everybody? I need to know who everybody is. When you say everybody, what do you mean? And he was like, well, you know, your family, my family, my ex-wife. She was like, you're who? Now, his ex-wife, Kathleen, if y'all remember from last season, Kathleen is a big old you-know-what, okay? Kathleen is determined to be a witch. We replace the W with another letter. And she was really mean to Bree. And I don't understand why Bill feels like inviting her to, to Bree's birthday party is appropriate. Now, if you were just having a, a housewarming, um, you bought a new home, or if you were having... Um, something that this new hotel you just built, that's different. That's networking. That's playing nice. But this is her birthday party. There is no reason for Kathleen to be at her birthday party, okay? And he says, well, you know, she's the mother of my children. Your grown-ass children. Like, your kids are grown, grown. Like, grown. Gr grown. You're 60. You don't have no kids. You have people that you fathered. Your children. Listen, and of course, Brie gave in because what else Brie gonna do? Just like she agreed to move to Miami, even though she didn't want to move to Miami, what's she gonna do? So, um, they go to so later on in the episode, we, we have the party and we see Brie meeting up with her mom and her sister, and of course, all of them are like, mm. I don't know about this whole party situation. You already know we don't really like being around them rich, right folk like that. We're only doing this for you and for the cameras. And, you know, I guess we're going to show up, honey. And she had a very um, uh, Celine-inspired outfit. She had this bedazzled, you know, bralette thing. And then the rest of her outfit was white. I was like, okay, you giving me very Selena with this outfit. Okay, okay. And, um... So she's at the party, and of course, it's almost like you could, you could, you could stick a boulder on one side of the party. It's her family and friends. On the other side of the party, it's his family and friends, and they are really not even trying to mingle. They, they just not. They're not even trying to mingle. They, they're not even trying to say, "Well, hey, are you her? You're her mom? Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, I met Bree a few times. Like none of that." And you can see that her side of the family is very uncomfortable. They talked to her dad, and her dad was like, "Look." I'm just here because it's my baby girl, but for real, for real, I could be home sipping on a Corona, watching a football game. Like, I don't really need to be here. Um, her mom 
was ready for for Catherine. Catherine is the ex-wife. Mom was like, listen, I really don't like her. I don't like the things she said to my daughter. I don't like the things she said about my daughter. Because remember, we're a season later. And so everybody has seen the season. They saw what, what happened. They saw the little conversations that went on behind the scenes. They saw the confessionals. And so they, she's like, I'm just not here for it. And so there was a scene where Bill took his, you know, took Kathleen to go meet Bree and had the mom, you know, introduce them to each other. And mama was like, somebody said something about Catherine being beautiful. She was like, on the outside, not so much on the inside. I said, I know that's right, mama. You better let her know that that's your baby girl and you don't play those games. You better let her know that you don't play these games with your baby girl. Okay? I'm with it. I was here for all of it. All of it. Um, so, of course, <laughs> that ain't goes quite as planned. So then we have the couple that I, Rodney and, um, ooh, what's my girl name? Rodney and Desiree. Rodney is the guy that is a friend of a friend. I know Rodney. Well, I don't know Rodney. I know, but I know Rodney. I've, I've, I've had his wine. He's an entrepreneur. He started a wine company. So if you're into it, I'm, I should put the, the, I'll put the link in the description box. I'm trying to find a website for his it's a black black owned wine company you guys go support it the wine is pretty good i've had it i've been at different events you know okay and rodney and desert right now rodney is he lives in washington dc he has a home in dc and then he has a a, a beach house down at um saint saint michael's saint michael's um Desiree lives in California, but she's from New York. Now, they met through his publicist or something like that. And they've been dating for about a year. And he pretty much takes care of her. She runs a nonprofit. And she was like, listen, I don't have no money. I don't come from no money. But, you know, I do. Um, but I do. Oh, shoot. I forgot something really important today. Ooh, hold on. So, Rodney... Um, takes care of her, like I said. I'm sorry, y'all. Rodney takes care of her, honey. Pays her bills and all that good stuff. But she does still live on a budget. She, you know, runs a nonprofit, and we all know that that's not a very lucrative child. I worked for a nonprofit, and the work was good, but the money wasn't, and I couldn't stay long. Okay, I had bills to pay, so I get it, and I understand the struggle. Now, she flies out to visit Rodney. She said, "Now, here's the thing, Rodney." They've been dating for a year, and Rodney has not introduced her to his friends and or family. And she said, so when I come out there, what are we going to do? He said, oh, we're going to Netflix and chill. She said, well, don't you think it's time that I met your family? Like, don't you think that, that it's time for that to happen? And he was like, no, mm -mm. no, it's not. It's not time yet. And she was like, well, that is ridiculous. And he said, I'll tell you what, I'll let you meet my assistant. <laughs> He said, she knows who you are. Don't nobody want to meet your assistant? Who wants to meet your assistant? I am dating you. I want to meet your family. No disrespect to the assistant, but I don't... We don't need to... Boy, bye. So, <laughs> she said... So, he says, well, you know, I wish you would move out here so we could see each other more often. Who the hell is going to move, fly all the way across the country... To live in your house as your concubine that don't nobody know about. Because that's basically what that is. If you can't introduce me to your family and you can't take me out in public, we are not a couple. We are not boyfriend and girlfriend. I am your concubine. And I am here for your pleasure when you feel like dealing with me. And I can't go nowhere. That is crazy. So I'm with you on that one, Desiree. And away in hell, I'm flying halfway across the country. Well, not halfway. Across the country. Moving everything, uprooting my whole life to sit in your lake house. Nice lake house it is. Now, it's a beautiful lake house. But I ain't doing all that to sit at your lake house all day, every day. And do what? Why you out here running around, moving and shaking? No. No, bruh. Mm -mm. You can't have it. Rodney, you can't play that game. So, she gets out and for some reason, she got it in her mind that he bought that lake house for her. And she was like, this is mine? Oh my gosh, I can't believe you got this for me. And I'm like, well, what? What in anything that he said told you that that lake house belonged to you? What? 
And the producers asked, and the producers like, did you buy that lake house for her? He was like, um, it's my lake house. <laughs> I was like, uh, exactly. So when it's time for her to, you know, unpack, she was like, well, where am I going to be sleeping? Okay, so both y'all crazy as hell. Because now, not only have you not been introduced to his family, but y'all ain't having sex. Y'all are sleeping in separate rooms. Listen, I ain't going to say too much yet. Because I don't want to be disrespectful. But I see some things in this scenario that don't smell right. I'm just saying. So Rodney is feeling some kind of way that he ain't getting no nookie nookie. And she feeling some kind of way that she can't meet his family. And she feel like, you know, um, that they need to be married before she give him some. Now, I was with you on the moving cross country part. But girl, you almost 50 years old. If you don't, and you've been married twice, if you don't go on and break that man off a little piece, girl, girl, now like I said, I got some thoughts and some concerns. I'm keeping to myself right now. Okay? We got a long season to go. I'm see, I'm waiting to see some things before I, before I comment further. Moving on. So then we have another new couple, um, Noni and, what did I write his name down? Mulgrain? Magroni? Oh, that's my own hair right Y'all, I can't read, child. I don't, listen, that was millionaire. I can't read my own hair right sometimes. Y'all be asking why I don't take notes sometimes. Hell, when I do take notes, I don't understand what the hell I done wrote. Anyway. So Noni is a self-made millionaire. Um, she sounds like she she grew up with a little bit of privilege, but then you know she got to a certain point where she decided to you know drop everything and move to London. And her parents responded by cutting her off. She uh, created her own business, and it is a multi-million-dollar beauty business. Um, I'm sure my beauty gurus have probably heard of her company before. Um, she lives in Seattle, Washington now. She has a really nice life. She was married for 22 years. But she is now divorced and is now dating Reese. Reese is very, very much her senior. I mean, her junior. And he is a throwback Nirvana grunge guy. Like, he's got the long beard and the long stringy hair. He works sometimes. I mean, she takes care of him too, pays his bills. He lives like an 18-year-old teenager in his mama's attic. I don't know if that's where he lived, but that's where it looked like he lived. And this relationship to me already spells ridiculous. There is absolutely nothing this man could be doing for you other than blowing your back out. And I'm just going to have to put it out there like that. And I'm just going to have to be blunt about it. There is nothing that this man could be doing for you other than blowing your back out. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. And she even said, you know, well, it's time, you know, I want to, I want to um, take you and introduce you to some of my friends. And he was like, why? And she was like, because I think it's time for you to come and meet some of my friends. And he was like, but I'd rather not. Listen, he's already letting you know what your relationship is to him. Okay. This is the opposite of what we have going on with Desiree and Rodney. Desiree is like, listen, why won't you introduce me to your friends and family? And Rodney is like, mm-mm. Now, again, when the producer asked him why, he said that, you know, he just wasn't ready for that yet. Um, that his family come from money and um, got a little bit of money. And he don't want people to think that, you know, she's a gold digger. Listen. Uh, don't say that yet. Okay, moving on. So back to to noni so i just feel like if this man is not interested in meeting your family and your friends girl y'all are just a good time up in his mama attic i'm just saying i'm gonna just leave that right there um miss noni i'm gonna just leave that right there okay i'm gonna let that one go lord have mercy then we got brian and gentile listen Gen T, if y'all remember, was the one that left Brian at the altar last season, okay? Now, Gen T has not talked to Brian. He returned his phone calls. Matter of fact, I think even blocked him at one time. She said she left immediately after she left him at the altar and went on a European vacation for a couple of months just by herself. We saw all the pictures of her in Rome and in London and all of that. She went and had herself a good little time. And now she's back 
and she's meeting with him just to let him know it's over. I'm moving on. I'm going to start dating other people. This here is not happening. Like me leaving you at the altar was the end. It wasn't a, uh, I need to think about it. It wasn't a, uh, damn, maybe I made a mistake. No, 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 mm -mm, no. It was a, this is over. It was a cue, new edition, is this the end? Yes, it is. It is over. And Brian, he can't, he's not, it's not digesting. He's not comprehending that it's over. Right? So that was pretty much the first episode. Y'all go ahead and check it out. Like I said, you can find it on demand. Um, those of you who already watched it in real time, y'all let me know what y'all think. Others of you, y'all go find it. Um, and let me know what y'all think. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.